<laughs> oh, Oak Hills Church, I am so excited that I get to be a part of this. You understand, this is such an honor. I can't even begin to tell you. Like, it's Father's Day, and doggone, your church is amazing, and the stuff you're putting out is so cool. It is an honor to be a part of this. I can't even tell you. And then your pastor, Max Licato, amazing, the stuff he puts out. Amazing. And then Travis, you know, I'm sure you you probably put some, a book or something out. Too. I just haven't seen it yet. Maybe... Maybe work on that a little bit, I don't know. But anyway, Max Licato, the books that you're dropping, like, whoa, that book, well, oh, you'll get through this. Whoa, so inspiring. What I decided to do is write one for my homies. Um, yeah, so I wrote one that was really inspired by You'll Get Through This, which is called um, You Got This Dog. Yeah, yeah, it's basically, you got this dog. If you don't know what that means, it's probably not a title for you. I'm just going to throw that out there. So I am so, so excited about the other reason I'm excited. It's Father's Day. Like, it is Father's Day. And, I'm, and so I want to say big ups to all the dads that are out there. Listen, and if you're not a dad, please understand that there's probably opportunities right around you to be a father like one. Because there's plenty of children who don't have a dad in their life. So look for that opportunity. Um, also, some people have a hard time with Father's Day sometimes because maybe you didn't have a great relationship with your father. Maybe that's the case. Here's what I would recommend. Um, anything that your father lacked, the father fully makes up for 100 plus percent. So do not let your horizontal relationship with a father affect your vertical relationship with the father. I just want to kind of throw that out there. And I got a movie coming out that just came out this weekend. We were going to put it in theaters, but because of everything with the virus, we decided, this is so cool, we made it video on demand. So you can go home to iTunes or Amazon Prime and you can watch Selfie Dad. It's a movie that I get to play the lead role in. I'm pumped and excited about that, like on the real. So with that being said, um, I, one, of my, one of the greatest things I've ever been called is dad, like for real. And I, I got, my kids are amazing. So listen, instead of me sitting down and telling you about my kids, why don't I stand up and do it? I love being a dad. Like that stuff is the best, it's one of the best responsibilities. I got five kids. Yeah, man, and, uh, and, uh, and I travel a lot, you know, so I can see them all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. I don't see him. I don't see him. Uh, no, I do have five kids. And whenever you have a big family, you have to figure out ways to save money, right? We want to get our family pictures taken. That stuff was expensive. So we did to save money, right? So we all got in the front seat of the car. Um, <laughs> look both ways and rent a red light. That's what we did. That's what we did. That's what we did. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Two weeks later, the picture came in the mail. <laughs> oh. But my son blinked, so we had to do it again. <laughs> so I was doing that joke in prison recently, right? I wasn't in prison like, hey, I'm funny, get off me. It wasn't like that. Um, whenever we're doing a big comedy event, sometimes we'll stop at a homeless shelter, a prison, abuse children's facility. We'll stop there and we'll do some, some comedy for the people, right? So I'm at this prison and I'm doing, why well, do comedy at a prison? Some of y'all looking at me. It's a captive audience. I'm gonna throw it out there. Uh, <laughs> so we're at this prison and I do the joke about the red light and 75% of the prisoners laugh, the rest of them, nothing. Then I realized what was going on. Some of them had been locked up for so long, the dude next to him had to explain the joke. He was like, see, nowadays when you run a red light, they send a picture with a ticket in the mail. Then he looked at the dude next to him and was like, a red light is what they use for traffic when you go down the road. <laughs> and then he said, a row is what they use. <laughs> Where am I right now? I don't work that hard to find comedy. It just kind of shows up. Um, I took my daughter to get a toddler bed and uh, it came with a 20-year warranty. <laughs> I'm just gonna wait some years. I'm gonna take it back. They're gonna be like, what's wrong? I'm gonna be like, uh, her feet are hanging off the end. <laughs> and, and her husband's uncomfortable too. So. 
<laughs> I hope you enjoyed that comedy clip. Listen, I am so pumped and excited because what I just found out, you may not know yet because I'm announcing it right now. I'm actually coming to Oak Hills Church to do my full comedy show and I'm gonna do the weekend services. Yeah, <laughs> this will be so much fun. So you get to bring your friends. Like we're gonna catch them with the comedy and keep them with the truth. I am so excited. So make sure y'all gonna be there. <laughs> it's gonna be so much fun. Another thing I really like, one thing I enjoy when it comes to comedy is I really like awkwardness. Like I like creating awkwardness for real. Like, Did you just feel it just now? It was weird. You got ready to turn. Like, did this thing just freeze up? Nah, I just created some awkwardness. It is so much fun. Like, I literally enjoy doing that. So, with no further ado, let me show you how this kind of unfolds sometimes. Like, I'll look for awkwardness. Like, I'll get on an elevator when there's like six or seven people in there. I'll let the door close behind me, and I won't turn around. And then I'll say something random like, my shoes are on upside down. <laughs> and then everyone gets off on the next floor. <laughs> and then I just giggle my way to the top. It's so much fun. Another thing I do, right, you gotta try this. This is so much fun. Like, I'll use a phrase the right way that most people use the wrong way. It creates awkwardness and it's so much fun. Let me explain. So I walk up to somebody I don't know. I never met him before in public from a little distance. I walk up to him and I'll say, hey there, stranger. Haven't seen you in forever. <laughs> then I just walk off, I just walk off. I'm telling you, you gotta try it, you gotta try it. It'll be awkward at first, when you go home, you'll be crying. <laughs> like, it is the best, it's the best. Yo, something else I did, like, so I grew up in Michigan, right? I grew up in Michigan, and it's cold in Michigan, right? Now I live in Dallas, right? And recently, um, recently I found one of my old ski masks, right? <laughs> my old ski masks, right? Um, and I like awkwardness and stuff, man. So, uh, so I just start walking around Dallas with a ski mask on, man. I'm not, I'm not gonna rob anybody, that's just wrong. I just got a ski mask on, right? Just, just... Went to the bank, too, <laughs> went to the bank, went to the bank. Um, again, I'm not gonna rob anybody, I'm in line like everybody else. Hey, little girl, how you doing? Cool. <laughs> Reason I went to the bank is because like, what they gonna do? Have you seen the security guards at the bank? It's like one extreme or another. Some young dude, pimples on his face, he really an insecurity guard. <laughs> or it's like a super old dude with like six hearing aids, a social security guard. <laughs> and they never got a gun, they never got a gun. They got a walkie-talkie. You know a security guard, you a tattletale. That's what you are. <laughs> You're a grown man tattletale. That's what you are. You ever be on a job interview and partway through you realize, huh, I don't wanna work here. Yo, at that point, don't bail on the interview. You should have fun. Flip the whole interview. They say something like, so tell me a little bit about yourself. They're like, you know what? You go first. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Where do you see me in five years? Because <laughs> they always ask those weird questions. They ask questions like, uh, they'll say, so tell me about a time you had a disagreement with a coworker, and then tell me how you worked it out. Like, oh, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had a colleague who actually took credit for some work I did. Like, they didn't do anything on a project. I fully did it, and they took all the credit. So what I did, right, I walked over to their cubicle, right? Um, and then uh, fast forward, uh, here I am, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Hope that was entertaining for you. So listen, now there's a clip that I wanna, I wanna share with you. But let me set it up first, right? Um, a while ago, me and my wife, well, quite some while ago, we were looking at some old home videos. And the clip I'm gonna share with you is a video of our youngest daughter being born. Um, well, it's not her being born, because I'm not gonna share that clip with you, because that would be a little past my awkward level. So, let me set this up. I actually took this video. The video you're about to watch, I took this video. But I didn't understand the power behind it until I sat down and actually watched this video. So. My daughter is like two and a half minutes old, right? And uh, she, you know, the nurse has her 
and uh, they got her under that little chicken light thing, the little lamp, the little chicken warmer thing. I don't know what you call it. I don't Ask Travis, he might know. Anyway, so they got him under the little, the little chicken light thing and uh, the nurse is about to clean her up. And I'm sitting there recording and then she starts to cry. And uh, I want you to notice what happens when she hears my voice. Okay, Portland, look, I'm right here. It's okay, it's okay. I'm right here, I'm right here. We're doing just fine. It's okay, it's okay, I'm right here. Right here, yeah, it's okay. It's okay, baby, it's okay. Yo, that was pretty doggone powerful. So listen, um, it's like seven, seven and a half minutes so later, and the nurse is done cleaning her up, and um, she starts to cry again. I speak up, and she stops crying again. But I want you to notice what happens when I tell her I love her. Portland, it's okay. It's okay. It's good. It's good. It's good. I'm right here. I'm right here. I am right here. I love you. I love you. I love you. Yeah, I'm right here. I'm right here. It's okay. It's okay. So that was pretty powerful. Here's what I want you to catch from this video. There's going to be times in life where maybe you're going through this right now where you're just, where you've been hurt, people let you down, things don't seem to be working out the way you want it to be, or maybe you're just frustrated even to the point of tears. The key thing to do in those moments is to be still and listen for the Father's voice because he is talking to you. And what he wants you to know is that he's right here. He loves you. All you have to do is open your eyes.